pests that we spend the most time managing are flea beetles, cucumber beetles, and cabbage worms. Um, we have a few other pests that are occasionally an issue, but those are the ones that I would say year after year we have to invest um, time and energy into controlling. The biggest thing with, I'd say, any pest um, control is rotation. Um, so we try to make sure that uh, any crop in one family does not appear in the same field again for three years. Um, and, it, and if possible, we try to move them also kind of as far away physically on the farm as possible. If it's a, a been a particularly bad pest year and we're worried about that uh, the following season. So I would say rotation um, is your number one cultural practice. Um, and the other is if you're dealing with um, transplanted crops, which we do have some brassica crops, our, our uh, broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage and some of our kale, which is transplanted, is uh, you can grow a really healthy transplant in a really good uh, potting mix and then give your plants a really good start and that gives them a big advantage. Also, weed control is important, um, providing adequate, adequate water. Anything you can do to make your plants life easier will help them deal with pests uh, more effectively. Row covers are our primary method of controlling flea beetles. We use them on all of our Asian brassica greens, um, arugula, tatsoi, and, and baby kale are some of those. We also cover all of our larger brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, um, and cabbage at planting. And also we have to control flea beetles on eggplant. So we also cover those at planting too. And um, row covers are tremendously effective. Um, if they're used well, you do a good job keeping them down. That'll give you uh, fairly good flea beetle control. Uh, the way we store, we store all our row covers, um, we, we use 250 foot long pieces. That's how long our beds are. And we use pieces that are either, uh, will cover one bed or two beds at a time. And we store those on 10 foot, uh, two inch PVC pipes. We keep them rolled up tight on there. And then um, it's very easy then to put, to put the row cover down. We'll go out to the field, uh, we can put a single peg in the beginning to just hold the row cover in place and a person can grab each end of the PVC pipe and walk out and your row cover is in place. Um, if it's particularly windy or something like that, you can occasionally put a peg down, just fasten them in, into place until you have a chance to thoroughly do it. And if it's a double wide row cover on that 10 foot PVC pipe, it's just folded in half so it fits on there. And then after we pull the row cover go out, we'll go and, and fold over the edge and apply a, a peg generally every 10 feet. Um, we like three-pronged three plastic pegs. They're the strongest. You do need a rubber mallet generally to drive those in, and it takes a little practice to get good with them. But we'll do those approximately every 10 feet the length of the row cover. We'll pull tension first lengthwise on the row cover, and if we're working over hoops, we'll also pull tension across from the person working on the other side to make them nice and tight over the hoops. And the other really nice fact about keeping your row cover stored on pipes, besides storage and labeling, all those things are helpful, is that uh, it's very easy to take up. Um, we've come up with a system where we, then when we go to take up a row cover, we have two portable saw horses we can set up at the end of the field, and we have a pipe strap on each of those saw horses. Then we feed our 10-foot PVC pipe through that, so it's fastened to the saw horse on either side. We can pull up all the pegs out of the row cover at that point, if it's a double wide row cover, we'll fold it in half at that point. And then uh, it generally takes three people for us to do this. We'll pull it up to the saw horses and, and wrap the row cover on the pipe once or twice. Then we have, we've built um, a PVC crank. Uh, it just looks like a spool, a handle you would, you would use to crank uh, anything really, just a big, big PVC handle that we attach to the pipe. We just uh, tap that in place with our hands. And then one person can begin rolling in the row cover the other two people can stand on the sides and guide it in so it rolls up really nice on the pipe. You do have to be concerned about using row covers um, with brassica greens for one reason is uh, humidity buildup can be an issue. If plants are quite large under the row cover and it's, and it's a fairly wet time period, you can get uh, trouble with both rot, um, just from the ground never drying out, and also we have trouble sometimes with aphids or white fly larvae under a row cover. Um, for the white fly larvae, we mostly have that on our Asian turnips and radishes. And we find that as long as you un uncover them about a week or so before they're ready to be picked, the air moving through the crop, or moving through the crop will uh, prevent any damage. For something as a case like eggplant, we just determine pressure when pr pressure is high visually. Um, if you start to see the leaves starting to look like Swiss cheese, and when you can see a flea beetle, because that means they're getting big and they're eating a lot of your plants. Um, when they're small, they're very hard to see, but when you start noticing them visually, it's time to take action. Um, but again, uh, generally, 
once a, once the eggplant is uncovered and flowering, it's big enough that it can its growth will outpace the damage that they do until usually late in the fall um, when the season ends, and by that point we're not too concerned about them anymore. We have um, cucumber beetle pressure on basically anything that's in the cucumber family, whether it be uh, summer squash, zucchini, cucumbers, uh, our melons and watermelons, our winter squash. Um, I believe that's it. Basically the, that family of crops is what's going to be, uh, be affected. Cucumber beetles themselves generally do not cause a lot of damage to the crops. Um, what they're very good at doing is transporting diseases from planting to planting. Um, they can, we do sometimes find them to be actually physically destructive to the crops early in the season, it seems like in particular with our young zucchini or young cucumbers. And for that reason, we'll keep those crops covered. Also, it helps um, protect them from frost damage early in the season or just cold weather in general. But then that by the time we uncover those crops with, from the row covers, they're big and can take uh, hopefully any what, um, what cucumber beetle pressure there may be. But I have seen cucumber beetle pressure to the point where they'll actually you know, destroy the plant. And at that point, then we'll use surround more as our control. Um, surround is a kaolin clay product that uh, you mix into suspension with water and you spray to coat the entire, the entire leaf surface of the plants. We, we just use um, a backpack sprayer, a hand pump back, backpack sprayer for, for spraying our surround. And uh, coverage the, is a little bit hard to see, but it is white, the spray. So that gives you a little bit of an idea what you've gotten and haven't gotten. And uh, the underside of the leaves is difficult to get. The only thing you can do is just try and keep the wand moving a lot. Do your best to kind of go underneath the plants as you go. But again, we're trying to move pretty quickly, so you just do the best you can as quick as you can. Um, you don't have to cover every square inch of the leaves to, to have it be fairly effective. Yeah, the, the way surround works is that um, after the plant is coated with the white kind of clay, kaolin clay substance, that, that then forms a barrier that when um, uh, beetles or really any insect lands on the plant, um, it get, they basically get covered in this powder. And, uh, uh, cucumber beetles and insects breathe through their skin and they find this irritating and uh, the, the the way we describe it is that then the, then the insects spend their spend excessive time grooming actually trying to clean the, the residue off their skin and they just become sort of disgusted and move away and uh, believe it or not that actually is quite effective and uh, works pretty well and um, it's it's nice for that reason in the sense too that you're using a pesticide that isn't really a broad spectrum thing that's killing the insects, it's actually just annoying them till they go somewhere else and leave you alone. And beyond that, um, uh, several of the cucumber crops, uh, cucumbers, zucchini, squash, and melons, we'll plant successions of as well. Um, we generally plant cucumbers and zucchini every three to four weeks. Um, and it's not so much because of the cucumber pr beetle pressure themselves, it's just that the plants seem to become exhausted and the cucumber beetles start to spread diseases, as well as us picking, start to spread diseases through the patch. Um, so it's good to have a fresh batch coming, on, coming online, I'd say about every three to four weeks. So then you can till in your previous planting um, as quickly as possible is a good idea, and then move on to the next. The, the important thing to remember then when you are doing succession planting is when you have successions overlap and you're picking, is to always pick from the newest planting first and work your way back into the older plantings. That way you're not carrying either pests or diseases from the older plantings into your brand new, nice looking plants. Mm -hmm. Cabbage worms, again, uh, uh, rotation is an, is an important control. Um, and again, uh, the, the crops that cabbage worms affect are generally crops that we transplant. So um, providing really strong, healthy plant transplants out into the field is another uh, important control. Um, beyond that, those are about the main cultural practices, I would say. It's uh, growing good transplants and, and rotation. For cabbage worm, we use BT. Um, Bacillus thuringiensis, the Kerstaki variety, is the, is the one that's most effective for controlling cabbage worms. In terms of using Bt as a, as a control on brassicas, we don't really worry about brass, uh, cabbage worms being, again, a pest that necessarily affects the health of the crop. It's um, almost more of an aesthetic uh, effect, in particular in broccoli heads, but also it can be a problem in, um, in winter kale, large kale, and cabbage where the cabbage worms will want to either chew holes in the leaves, in the case of kale or cabbage, or in broccoli, there's just green worms all peppered throughout your head. Um, they don't actually really cause a whole lot of noticeable damage to the plant, except that when you go home to cook it, and you put it in a pot of water and a bunch of green worms float to the top. So it's mostly keeping our customers happy is, is why we uh, use BT to control cabbage worms. We use a couple of basic measures for when we decide it's time to spread BT in terms of controlling cabbage worms. The first is just visually. 
um, you can look and see when there's a lot of white cabbage moths in your field. Um, some years, the, the instant you're, you're transplanting out your cabbage plants, you see cabbage moths laying on, landing on them and laying their eggs um, immediately. Other years, um, just because of natural population fluctuations, there's not that many around, and it's not a real severe problem. Um, but in general, for us, we're mostly treating just the crop prior to harvest. So approximately when we look, for instance, at broccoli or cauliflower, this may be another example, about a week or two before we think we're going to be harvesting, we'll go out and use a backpack sprayer um, and mix up a, a batch of BT, and we generally spray just the heads and the surrounding area of the plant. Um, we're not spreading material over the entire plant. We're just spraying the area that our customers are going to get and that we don't want the worms to be in. And then uh, what happens basically, the way BT works, is that those cabbage worms then feed on the crop and uh, they ingest the BT and it actually uh, it, uh, will rupture their intestinal tract, is basically how I understand it, and they'll die. Again with BT, I just recommend it with any spray, is just reading the label that comes in the bag. Um, I think the most dangerous uh, part of dealing with BT is dealing with the concentrate when you're mixing the mix. Uh, you want to wear gloves and it's always good to wear long protective clothing. I believe with BT it's also recommended to remove that clothing after spraying and uh, do your best you know, to keep it keep it off of you and uh, uh, your clothes as much as possible. Yeah, it's our main way of, of seeing what sort of threshold we've, we've reached in terms of, of pest pressure is just by getting out there and walking around. Um, the best management you can do for anything on your farm is to get out there and walk around all of it. Um, so you get out there and take a good look at the crops, you know, walk an entire row, walk a few different rows um, to see what sort of uh, pressure, whether it may be insects or diseases or maybe something just needs water. Um, so, uh, you know, we've always kind of gone by this philosophy that the, the best f fertilizer on the farm is the farmer's footsteps. So if you can get out there and really and get out there within your crops and check things out, uh, you can really uh, make some good management decisions then. Um, just in, in general, dealing with insects uh, and pest management organically um, isn't particularly difficult as long as you're well prepared. Um, you want to take a, be a note of the crops you're growing and what are their significant pests and then make, develop a plan before the season to, to be able to manage them when the, when the trouble comes. Um, if, per, if that year you don't have any pest or disease pressure and you don't need to use whatever methods you've, you've devised, uh, that's great. At least you're prepared for next season. But um, being prepared and doing your research ahead of time is probably the most important thing you can do in terms of controlling pests on your farm.